In this video, I will show you how to create a simple Pong game using ChatGPT. To make it easy, let's say the Pong game should run in a console window, it should be written in the newest csharp.net, so it should run on any platform, Windows, Linux and Mac, and since it is running in the console, it should also work on a potato machine. But before we start, welcome to the channel, here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. If you like AI generated content or looking for digital art in general, then you will like the sponsor of this video. Thanks to Creative Fabrica for sponsoring this video. If you are looking for creative digital art and graphics, then you should definitely check out Creative Fabrica. It is one of the largest marketplaces for creators and designers, with a library of over 6 million fonts, graphics and digital print-on-demand assets. Recently Creative Fabrica launched their first AI image generator called CF Spark. Using CF Spark you can create images that are 100% unique, you can download your own unique creations or publish them on the platform for paid use by other members and that way monetize your AI creations. You can try it out for free or with a monthly $9 subscription. With the subscription you get 1000 speed credits that allow you to jump to the top of the queue and get your AI images first without waiting in line. In addition to regular discounts and daily deals, they also have a contest where you can win store credits with your AI designs created in CF Spark. So if you are interested, you can check out the link in the upper right corner or down in the description and unleash your creativity today with Creative Fabrica. I'm here on the ChatGPT official website. I'm already logged in. Now let's ask some questions. Down here is the prompt. So the first question is, can you write a console line Pong game in C sharp with two layers. Let's try it out. Run. And it sure can. Now it's writing the example. Now this is the output and suddenly it stops down here. And I know this isn't the full code because it should end with a closing bracket down here. So I will tell ChatGPT continue writing and enter. Okay, now just continues to write unformatted code but it actually continued where it stopped and instead we got the description as code. So it says this is a basic two-player console line Pong game. Now I will take the code, copy this part first and switch to Visual Studio Code. Here I am in Visual Studio Code and I already prepared a .NET project here. So I will just paste the code snippet in like that, go back to ChatGPT and copy the rest by hand. And again Visual Studio Code, paste in and format this part as well, format selection. So this looks fine, no errors, and without even analyzing the code, let's just try it out. Run. Okay, this is it. It says player one, move up, move down, and now player two, move up, move down. The pedals moved and the ball moved. Player one, player two. Okay, this is now a turn based game. So first the player one moves, then the player two moves, and then the board is updated. Okay, I didn't want something like that. The second player lost and now the game is over. Okay. Now this is not the Pong game that I imagined, but maybe I need to be more specific. But it actually gave me something functional. And by looking at the code, it actually did the job very well. I really like the comments here. So you know what this section of the code does. Check for ball collision with pedals, draw game board, and then in the end we have the turn-based logic. Interesting idea to be honest. And all of this should easily run on different platforms. This Pawn game is not the first game that I made for different platforms. A while ago I created a game called Snappy Mouse Run, which is available on Android and iOS for free. It is an endless runner game, so you run as a mouse and try to avoid different obstacles. So if you're interested, you can find the link to the free game up there or down in the description. Let's try to run this one on WSL, on Linux. This is my Ubuntu console, I'm already in the right folder, so let's run it, console pong exe. And yes, you can run .NET 6 exe files directly in Linux. So let's try it out, enter, and here it is, it's running. Will I hit it? Yes, I did. Player 2 wins. Now back to the game itself. I didn't want a turn-based game, but a real-time pong game. So let's give ChatGPT another try. I will create a new chat and this time I will be more specific. 
can you write a real time console line pong game in C sharp with two players and a score at the top? So this time I want real time and I want a score at the top. Let's see what we'll get. Run. Again, it didn't finish the code snippet, so I have to tell it this time more polite. Can you continue writing the code snippet with a question mark and enter? Okay, if you're polite, then it gives you the right formatting. Finished. Let's try this one out. Again, copy the first part, switch to Visual Studio Code. For the previous example, I will rename that one to Pong1 and main should be start. And I will create a new file, pong2.cs and paste in the code back to chat GPT, copy the second part and paste it here. I don't see any errors. So let's try that one out. Run. All right, so this is real time. Whoa. And it crashed with an exception. So this time we got something that compiles but doesn't actually work. The exception that we got basically tells us that we are trying to set the cursor position somewhere outside the controls buffer. So actually outside the playing area. In case we are outside the playing area, that means we are actually hitting the wall and the ball should bounce back and not throw an exception. So let's try to fix that. But I will not fix the code by myself. I will actually tell ChatGPT to fix it. Back here at ChatGPT. And let's write. So rewrite the previous example so that it uses a fixed size game field. The player pedals cannot exit the game field and the ball bounces off the game field wall like in a real Pong game. All right, let's see what we'll get. Okay, now this looks good. We have a game field. And again, it stopped writing somewhere in the middle. Can you please continue writing the code snippet? Sure. Always be polite. Finished, so we got a fixed size game field. Ball bounces off the walls and the pedals are restricted to the game field and stops them from going out. Perfect. So let's copy that. Copy this one to Visual Studio Code. I will just overwrite the previous example like that. And the second part, copy and paste. Okay, I don't see any errors. So let's try it out. Run. All right, this looks better. Can I move the pedals? Yes, I can. And we also have the scores up there. Perfect. I will let the first player win. So obviously the first player that reaches 10 points wins and the game is over. This was now a pawn game how I actually imagined it. Let's try it again. So we have a fixed game field and two players can play real time against each other. Let's try this one also in WSL in Linux. Here is my WSL Linux console and I want to run consolepong.exe. Run. Working here as well. Now the right player should win. Can I make this one a bit bigger? Yes, I can. Game over and right player wins. Nice. So at the third try, we actually got what we wanted from ChatGPT. Obviously, we need to be very specific what we want. And I'm actually surprised that we always got something that we can compile. And I really, really like the comments here. So you always know what this section of the code does, like get player input or update the ball position and so on. So the code is very well commented. Now let's add one more feature to the Pong game and that's sound. I want that every time a player scores, we hear a beep. The simplest form of sound, but it's a good feedback. So let's go over to ChatGPT and let's write add a simple console beep every time a player scores and run. Okay, now it tries to write the whole thing from scratch. I actually don't want that. So I just stop this one. And instead I will ask how to add a simple console beep every time a player scores. And question mark. Let's try that one out. That's what I want. I just want the part where it adds the beep. And here is the beep. And the second beep. All right, so I got the snippet. I will copy that. So from update the ball position till ball scored on the left side. Let's find this in Visual Studio Code. So I'm looking for update the ball position all the way to ball scored on the left side. So I will highlight all of that and paste the snippet in. Perfect. Save that. I don't see any errors. So let's try it out. Run. I will zoom in like that. So let's score. All right. Nice. That's what we wanted. Let's close that.
Let's also try this one in WSL in Linux. Again, the WSL console, and I want to run console pong.exe. Let's make it bigger and let's score. All right. So, also here we have the beeps. Let's close that. So, with this, we saw that ChatGPT can also add features to the code. Although a Pong game isn't too complicated to write, I'm actually very impressed what ChatGPT is capable to do. And I also used ChatGPT to extend the Blender plugin in Python. The Blender plugin uses Stable Diffusion with Google Colab to upscale images, to in-paint images and even to generate new images. And I made a video about this, so if you're interested how to use Blender or GIMP with Stable Diffusion, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It keeps me motivated, it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.